Hi there, Stephanie here. I had a chance this weekend to read this new book, Shifting the Balance, Six Ways to Bring the Science of Reading into the Upper Elementary Classroom by Katie Egan Cunningham, Jan Birkins, and Carrie Yates. This is an extension of the Birkins and Yates book that was focused on kindergarten through second grade. And I really admire these authors for responding to requests from teachers, apparently including the author, Katie Cunningham, to extend their work into uh, the intermediate grades. I think this book does a really nice job of presenting to intermediate grade teachers the science of reading in a way that's very accessible, that covers a lot of topics in kind of you know, brief bits on a lot of different cop topics is the way that I would think about it. What I most appreciate about this book is that they tackle a lot of myths and taboos and misunderstandings head on. They do it directly, but kindly. And I think that's uh, really unique. It, it's actually unique <clears throat> to have books that are based in the reading research, <clears throat> excuse me, for this uh, grade band because sometimes this grade band of teachers can be a little bit forgotten in our efforts, mine included, to uh, focus on prevention in the early grades. I really like the way the book is organized into these six um, shifts, behavior changes for teachers in these grade levels. Lots of really nice graphics here, um, really a focus on what's in the research, but then applying it to, um, to the classroom. So I'm gonna just go chapter by chapter, which is uh, shift by shift, and uh, give you a little bit of a preview of what is in each of those chapters and my thoughts about each one. So the first shift is reconsidering how knowledge impacts comprehension. And here the authors take a fairly broad view of the topic of knowledge, and they discuss different types of knowledge. So not just content knowledge, and not just word knowledge, although they address that, uh, but they also talk about text knowledge and uh, cultural knowledge. So a nice sort of broad perspective, and they make really compelling points about how important it is to not just activate background knowledge, but to build that background and content knowledge uh, among your students. The second chapter, the second shift is rethinking the role of strategy instruction in learning to comprehend. Boy, this is a tough topic. And I feel like the authors may have um, danced around this one a little bit. This is, this is a real challenge. The most important message that they got through loud and clear in this chapter, in my opinion, is that reading comprehension is the product of many processes and that we don't have to repeatedly teach strategies over and over and over again. I don't think the active view of reading adds anything above and beyond the simple view. They included the active view here, so uh, I didn't love that particularly, but they don't spend a lot of time on it. They try to use different terms um, for strategies, so they're making an effort to stretch people's thinking beyond um, sort of the conventional ideas of of teaching main idea and making predictions and so on. And, and they focus the, the content of the chapter on some of the most important comprehension strategies to teach. Um, it's, it's a difficult thing to do. I, I wish that they had done a little bit more connection to writing in this chapter, but they did make some nice connections to fluency. So I really appreciated that about it. Um, just the whole concept that we shouldn't be teaching strategies grade after grade over and over again. We shouldn't be spending lots of instructional time on strategies. And it's really about um, activating processes or supporting and teaching processes that will result in comprehension as the product. Uh, chapter three is recommitting to vocabulary instruction. This is probably an area that's more familiar and comfortable for intermediate grade teachers. And I thought the authors did a really nice job in this chapter of covering the various different ways, research aligned ways that we can teach vocabulary directly and indirectly. And I especially liked the inclusion of morphology and the strategies for directly teaching morphology in chapter three. 
Uh, shift four, chapter four, is reclaiming word reading instruction in the intermediate grades. This is a place where intermediate grade teachers need, I think, lots and lots of support. There are really good um, discussions here and teaching approaches and strategies. They made the really important point that in the intermediate grades, you're going to have students who struggle with word recognition, even though you're not expecting to or your curriculum doesn't allow for that. So you're going to have to do small group differentiated instruction to clean up skill gaps. So I especially appreciated that. I think that is really, really important. I also liked the message that they gave, uh, the true message, which is that English orthography is tricky and we're not necessarily done teaching and students aren't done learning about how spoken English is represented in print after third grade. So we're going to have to be uh, still deliberately and intentionally teaching the code uh, into the intermediate grades. And in chapter five, they did a really nice job of tackling the three queuing issue head on. I think it was page 133 uh, that I especially liked uh, their, their approach to that. Again, direct, um, confronting things clearly and in a straightforward way, but also um, in a kind and compassionate way. So I appreciated that. Um, so shift six is fluency. And this, I think, is the weakest chapter in this book. Um, I felt like they weren't really digging into the research on how to improve text reading fluency because they don't really talk about repeated reading. And that's the strategy. That's the instructional approach that has the most research support. So that was disappointing. I felt like this chapter was more focused on how to get kids access to complex text, like how to provide scaffolds for students to access complex text, uh, which is not going to build fluency. Uh, there was discussion of things like um, ways to do whole group instruction, alternatives to round robin reading, which was good to see, but not really the individual or small group or partner work with repeated reading that's gonna improve fluency. You know, reader's theater is nice for uh, goals around making sure students feel included, goals around prosody. It's not really going to be enough in most cases to get students who are disfluent to, to read fluently. So um, I felt like that was the chapter that I enjoyed the least. Uh, and then chapter six, sh shift six, you gotta be careful how I say that, is reimagining independent practice in the literacy classroom. And this was a breath of fresh air as an ending to this book. Um, they were very thoughtful about prompting teachers to think about for whom is independent silent reading going to be valuable and important. Um, so what skills are you watching for to discern if it's gonna be valuable use of instructional time for students to read silently? They also did a nice job addressing uh, self-selected texts and and stretching teachers to think beyond always having students self-select the text that they read and they gave some uh, alternatives to that. And in that sixth chapter is when they really uh, did a nice job addressing the reading writing connection and made a, an important point about having students process text that they read by talking about it and writing about it. So that's a little bit of information about the shifting the balance Six Ways to Bring the Science of Reading into the Upper Elementary Classroom, a unique book that I think is worth you taking a look at and considering if you are extending your knowledge and exploration of the reading research beyond just the primary grades. So I hope you'll check it out.